Today on the morning grill, we did host the Deputy Minister of Transport and Infrastructure, infrastructure Development, that is Honorable Fortune Chassis. Honorable Minister, thank you very much uh, for thank having joined us in the program. Thank you. But uh, just to give an overview of some of uh, the issues that we did uh, touch on, critically looking at uh, uh, the projects uh, that are taking place in terms of uh, road rehabilitation in the country, maybe if you can give us an update on that. Yes. And uh, as we look ahead as well to uh, 2019, some of uh, uh, the roads that you wanted to be uh, uh, rehabilitating as well as uh, constructing. Yes, um, as I indicated, we are doing work all over the country. Uh, each province has got a provincial roads engineer. And uh, I want to commend our colleagues in the provinces who are doing marvelous uh, work. Um, so we are expecting that uh, we, we've covered um, in Kai, for example, the particular areas uh, in Gwengezi, uh, you know, issues of bridges all over. And so this is an area that we want to continue to um, uh, develop. Uh, Bight Bridge, we've uh, started, as I indicated, around Beatrice as well as uh, Chivo. And um, this is government doing this, and we hope to partner with the local partners uh, in the in the coming year. So we should see a lot of progress around that. Then around uh, Kanyemba as well, that's uh, another um, area where we want to <coughs> sorry to ensure that we have a, a modern infrastructure as an area which is going to bring in lots of development along the the Zambezi. Uh, people wanting to put all sorts of uh, businesses around there, so we want to be able to enable that. But we also want to look at rural roads, which um, especially uh, during the rainy season, uh, like now, are very, 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 very difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. And so we're also looking at technologies that are there, which are eco-friendly, which can be used to fix uh, um, rural roads, and that's part of the work we'll be doing next year. Having said that, uh, let's uh, touch also on uh, other critical areas in terms of uh, uh, some of your your, your, your uh, the, the portfolios that fall under ministry. You look at uh, VID as well, which is a critical area. You look at uh, the National Railways of Zimbabwe as well, and 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 as Zimbabwe as well. Maybe just a brief update on what's taking place uh, in those areas as well. Yes, uh, in the area of uh, the vehicle inspection uh, depot, and in response to the numerous complaints by the public. Uh, government initiated an IT project which we call Zimtis. Zimtis basically links uh, almost every entity that has anything to do with uh, vehicles, licensing, uh, uh, vehicle theft, uh, police traffic, Zilara itself, and um, uh, a lot of other uh, entities. The idea being that we want to limit human interface because that is what has been causing part of the corruption. So when uh, licenses are being taken by way of uh, technology, uh, there will be no room for rent-seeking behavior there. So we're hoping that uh, um, either by the end of this year or within the coming January, we will now be able to um, launch that project uh, and ensure that we are all connected. Now coming to uh, the NRZ, uh, there have been ongoing uh, discussions between uh, DIDG um, and Transit on one side and ourselves uh, this side. Uh, our discussions have uh, been very slow, but we're happy that we are seeing some progress at this moment in time, and we think that we'll finalize arrangements or financial closure by um, the end uh, of the first quarter of next year. Um, whichever way, we'll then find a suitable structure for us to begin to work on our railway infrastructure. And uh, before I let you go and and uh, and uh, wish you a Merry Christmas as well, let's look at uh, 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 funding as well, which is uh, quite critical for the fulfillment of uh, road construction and rehabilitation. Uh, where are you and how have you been able uh, to get funding and uh, how are you funding some of these uh, projects? Because I think it's quite critical uh, having to note that uh, the Zimbabwe cake that has to be shared economically in different ministries is uh, quite uh, small. But uh, how are you maneuvering around it and uh, making sure that uh, you fulfill the commitments and uh, the projects that you've already started? Yeah. Uh, upon uh, getting into office, uh, the minister and I looked at the financial arrangements around uh, infrastructure development and we saw that they were heavily skewed uh, towards uh, foreign entities which meant that we had to find uh, foreign currency which as you know we, we do not have uh, in any meaningful abundance at all 
So um, that caused us to then uh, be a bit inward looking in terms of how we're going to, to carry out these projects. And we realized that we have got significant amounts in local currency. And uh, also that from experience, we had uh, worked with local engineers around town. Uh, we had done marvelous work. And so our model going forward is to make sure that we work. We first of all use our own resources as government. We partner with the local private uh, sector and uh, we'll be paid in local currency. So it makes a, a lot of uh, good sense. And that should enable us to cover a lot more ground than in the past. And in conclusion, perception is everything. And, uh, uh, and looking at uh, what you're doing, because I think the rest of the country needs to be updated with what you're doing. Yes. Any plans uh, to make sure that uh, uh, you correct the perception, uh, people are always updated and uh, uh, get to know what's taking place, what your ministry is doing, some of the projects that they're carrying out? Yes, uh, this uh, government is about uh, being open because we realize that when uh, you have opaque systems, one, they give rise and promote uh, corruption. Um, number two, they also create a lot of uh, suspicion which not, may not be based on facts. So as a government and as a, this ministry in particular, we are going to be giving the public information and allowing the public to comment and critique the work that we are doing. We believe that that is the only way that we'll be able to advance our revolution in the area of the infrastructure. We uh, would like people to tell us the specifics in their own problems the problems that they are facing with uh, our departments or contractors and their own priorities in terms of uh, road infrastructure. So we don't want to be telling them that this is the road that needs to be fixed, but we also want to hear from them. So we're going to be asking uh, members of parliament to uh, get this information from their constituencies and advise us as government. And then from our position as the roads authority, we can then make an inclusive decision based on the priorities as seen by people on the ground. Honorable Fajin Chasi Amasa, thank you very much for joining us on today's edition of The Grill. Yes. And uh, we say to you, happy holidays. Thank you very much. I wish you a, a merry Xmas and a prosperous New Year and that uh, our roads will be uh, safe and that we will not have any more carnage in addition to what we've experienced already. Well, so that's all we had for you in today's edition of The Grill, where we did host the Deputy Minister of uh, Transport and Infrastructure Development, that is Advocate uh, Fortune Chassi. I certainly hope you did enjoy the program. And as always, it's uh, Crack Listening on Classic 263. Till next time, now we're talking.